All right, I'm going to show you all how to use the hole feature. Um, the first step in creating a hole is you got to have a center point. And so we have our sketch that we're going to, we have our 3D extrusion that we want to put a hole on. Um, the most important thing is we're going to now start a 2D sketch, and I need to put a center point or a point on it right here. Um, if you notice here in the second paragraph, second sentence, it says center points are used automatically as hole locations. And what you want to do before you do it is make sure that this is selected. The center point creation mode or point. If it's deselected, you're not going to get a center point. You're just going to get a sketch point. It can be useful in its own right, but that's not what we need. We need to make sure this is selected and almost never deselected. So when we put a center point down, it can be hard to see because it shows up in green. But if I highlight it, it shows up as like a cross right here. In this, you can dimension into location. So you can dimension the center of a sketch, just like anything else that you might have done. All right. If you needed to, you could circular pattern, rectangular pattern, any of that kind of stuff. All right. But the very first step in drawing a hole is using a center point. We're going to finish our sketch. Now, to use the hole feature, if you don't select anything, every single center point that you have will become the same type of hole. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go back here. I will place a couple of more center points. All right. So I select hole. All of these have become a hole. In order to deselect them, we do it just like we deselected the fillet. We hold control and click that center point. Or if you have more than one center point, you can click to select more than one. Another way to make sure that the hole is only created in the one that you want is to click the center point that you want the hole to be made from and then select hole. All right. So let's go through the whole menu. Um, number one, most important thing. So here's the placement from sketch. So we're doing it from the center point on a sketch. It's this menu. These are the different types of holes, right? This is a drilled hole. This is what you think of as just a common hole. This is called a counter bore, all right? The counter bore is a hole that's designed so that when it's the uh, screw head is drilled in, or really it's usually a hex head, when it's drilled in, it sits flush with the surface. A spot face is much like a counter bore. And this is a counter sink hole. Counter sink holes are used a lot with screws so that once again, when a screw is put into something, it sits flush or even with the surface. All right. Next thing that you can see is drill points. This shows what the end of the hole is going to look like. Is the end of the hole going to be angled or is it going to be flat? The termination, this is where the end of the hole is. You can have a through all, all right? And that's going to go through your entire structure. Or you can say a distance. Now that one, 0.25, is obviously a little long, so I'm just going to change this to 0.1. I'm sorry. That's a different thing, point one, so that we can see. There's the drilled end, and now you can see that our hole doesn't go through everything. Let's go back to edit this so I can show you some more features. All right, you can set the angle of the drill point, or if we need it to just be a flat end. All right. Here. These will do pretty much what they say they will. This one is the depth of the hole. This is pretty consistent across all, part, all hole types. This is the diameter of the hole. Another thing that's pretty consistent. You start to see some separate options. So when you choose counter bore, you now have the counter bore diameter and you have the counter bore depth. So if I change this to say 0.05 and the diameter to 
3.3. So we've changed that. You have the pretty much the same options right here with the spot face hole. And then the counter sink is slightly different. You have the diameter of the counter sink right here. You have the angle for the screw right here. So if I change this to 80, let's go back and read it. Change that to 0.80, to an 80 degree countersink. Well, that angle's not going to work. The depth of the entire hole, once again, the diameter of the hole, we can change the angle and width of the countersink. Changing drill points once again. Over here are the types of hole options we have. All right, we have a simple hole. This hole is exactly what it says. It is a basic hole. This is a clearance hole. A clearance hole, once it selects it, is actually designed to let a fastener that you tell it the size, basically screws, it's designed to let them clear the hole at a specific size. So, for instance, the width right here is going to be set for you. This is a tapped hole. And let's let that choose. So, all right. A tapped hole puts a screw thread in the hole. All right. And notice only par partially down. Um, you can choose the depth of the tap as well as the entire depth of the hole. Remember, that's a tap hole. And from there, once again, you choose your thread type. That's going to determine your hole diameter. Okay, we'll go through all this eventually. Um, right hand or left hand screws. Same thing for a tapered tapped hole. That will give you a thread type, which will automatically set your widths. And then you can do your depths yourself. Most of what we're going to be dealing with, though, are going to be simple holes where you do all of these settings. And so that's the basics of the hole. Now, one last thing that you can do, let's say that you have this set and you want to make one more hole like it. Or make another hole, but we hit OK and all of our points have gone. What you need to do is click the drop down by the hole, right click on your sketch and turn the visibility back on to make your center points show back up. That's basically the whole tool.